everybody and welcome back to Newegg TV. I'm Steve and today I'm going to do an overview on this developer board from Intel. This is the Galileo 1. So the Intel Galileo is designed for do-it-yourself crafters, engineers, or like tinkering artists and hobbyists. Uh, Intel Galileo provides the ease of development through support for the x86 and Linux software environments. Uh, the Galileo 1 features Intel's extremely low-powered Quark processor and an Arduino-based board. And in the, in the land of Arduino development, uh, sketches are programs and shields are PCB expansion cards. Uh, but let me explain. Shields are boards that can be plugged into the top of this and other Arduino PCBs to extend its capabilities. Uh, for example, motor control shields that would allow control of DC motors. Uh, Intel's hardware combined with the Arduino hardware software compatibility drive a lot of creative project, projects out there. Uh, things like sensors and robotic systems, uh, interactive light fixtures, and uh, wireless control irrigation systems, uh, and many others. But let's take a closer look at the board. All right, guys, so here's everything that comes inside the box. Of course, because uh, Intel's got this development board available for anybody in the world, they, of course, provide you with all the different adapters you need in several different countries. Uh, so aside from the ones uh, here, you, of course, need to have this one for the U.S., and it would just slide right inside here to lock it in place. Let me just show you that really quickly. And just like that. Now you're ready to rock. Uh, it is actually a 5 volt 2 amp output that's going to be powering this Arduino based board from Intel. So moving right along, we have several things to talk about around the board. I'm going to actually start in the center here because I find that the most interesting. That's the Intel Quark processor. Let me just grab a pin. I'll be able to point a little bit more effectively. This is the uh, X1000 SOC, that is system on a chip. It is 32-bit. They're using a 32 nanometer process. You actually see the core right there, that small re reflective area. Uh, it is a single core, single thread, 400 megahertz clock speed, 16 kilobytes of cache, and uh, that is L1 cache, plus an additional 512 kilobytes of on-die embedded SRAM. I believe the max uh, TDP is 12.5 watts. Probably shouldn't quote me on that one, though. Uh, memory on this particular board is also defaulted at 256 megabytes of DRAM. Uh, but if I just move right over here, you can actually see uh, one of the headers. This is the ICSP header. And moving down below that, you can actually see just barely. I might have to move that a little bit. There we go. Uh, in order to be able to see the, uh, the analog in headers, we have A0 marked, A0 through A5, as well as the IO ref connection. We have reset, as well as 3.3 volt, 5 volt ground, VIN, and uh, power. Uh, then, of course, below that, we actually have an IO ref voltage jumper uh, between 3.3 volts and 5 volts. Essentially, what's going to happen is this is where you'd set uh, the voltage to match what your shield would operate at. So whatever shield you end up attaching to the top of this, you'd want to make sure that it matches the voltage of the shield that you're going to be using. Uh, then to the right of that, they also have the 5 volt VIN. This basically connects the power regulated supply uh, to the, from the power jack here to shields or devices connected to the Galileo. So if you needed more than 5 volts uh, to any particular shield you're connecting, you're going to want to remove this jumper. And just below that, there's a surface-mounted reboot button. Uh, that's going to reboot the processor. And if I jump over here, uh, that looks like the, uh, the coin pins, which probably connect to the 3-volt vo coin cell battery for basically allowing operation between uh, turn-on cycles. Then we have a JTAG header, and that's basically for debugging. Uh, to the left of that, we have a reset button, and that's going to reset any sketches or any attached uh, shields. Remember, sketches are programs, and of course, the shields are those expansion uh, cards that we can attach to it. Uh, to the left of that, we have an SDIO port, which basically is where you're going to connect your micro SD card here for storage. Uh, then you have the 5 volt uh, power connector and a J2 jumper right here. And essentially, in its current position, you're, you're setting the 12C address uh, back and forth between it being the same for the IO expander EEPROM uh, addresses being 0100001, or making them different. Uh, in this particular case, the, the uh, jumper position that it's in right now, it's setting the 7-bit IO expander address 
to 01000000 and the EEPROM address to 101000000. Uh, that being the case, moving right along, we do have the Ethernet port here. Of course, that's only a 10-100, uh, but for most people doing their at-home uh, uh, device setup and you know tinkering, that's going to be more than what they're actually going to need. You also have a, a UART port here, and to the right of that, we have two USB uh, micro ports. Uh, the first one here is a micro B port. That's for your USB client in order to be able to connect in USB devices. Uh, to the right of that, it's actually a USB uh, host micro A port, and that's going to be able to support up to 128 uh, USB endpoint devices. Uh, to the right of that, I believe, actually, I'm not entirely sure what that is, so forgive me on that. Uh, but aside from that, below that, we do have uh, our digital uh, power, PWM, uh, connection here. There's actually six different um, uh, PWM, PWM power outs here, as well as the distance here between the 7 and 8 pin is a little bit further than the standard 100 millimeters, so keep that in mind depending on the shield that you end up getting or, or developing for this, that there's a bit of a gap here, 160 uh, uh, mils to be specific, or 0.16 inches. Uh, then we do have on the opposite side of this board, I'm just going to flip it around really quickly, put that back down so you can see it. There we go. Uh, a full PCI Express mini card slot, and it is PCIe 2.0 compliant, or I should say it has PCIe 2.0 compliant features. Uh, as well as with an, an optional converter plate, you can use half mini PCIe cards as well. Also provides USB 2.0 host port at the mini PCIe connector here. All right, guys, a couple things before we part ways. I want to make two corrections. One, the Quark processor actually has a TDP of 1.9 to 2.2 watts, as well as that 7-pin out that looks like an infrared header on a motherboard. That, in fact, is what a DiddyProg uh, programming unit would use in order to reflash the SBI flash on this particular Arduino board. But aside from that, that's going to wrap up this overview of Intel's Galileo 1 developer board. And if you like this video, don't forget to click the like button. If you haven't already done so, click subscribe to any of our various YouTube channels, and we'll see you soon.